In this video, I want to do a review of the common properties of functions. I'm going to go through a number of properties quite quickly here, but I hope that you've heard most of these terms before. Properties are very important for understanding and talking about functions. And this is a course about the behavior of functions, how they act. Defining properties gives a language to describe that behavior. I've already talked briefly about domain, but let me recap. The domain of a function is all possible inputs. I can restrict the domain to a smaller set, but without any restriction, I assume the largest domain possible. In the figure, I've drawn a logarithm that starts above x equals 3, so the domain here is all numbers larger than 3. The range of a function is all possible outputs. It's the mirror of domain. Domain is input, range is output. In the figure, I've drawn a quadratic where the lowest point is y equals negative 4, so the range here is all numbers larger than equal to negative 4. Symmetry is the central idea in mathematics. For functions, there are three types of symmetry I want to mention. First, a function is called even if it has a mirror symmetry over the y-axis. That is, if I flip the graph over the y-axis, the shape stays the same. Algebraically, this is equivalent to f of negative x equals f of x. The values for negative and positive are the same. Odd symmetry, symmetry is rotational symmetry by a half turn around the origin. That is, if I spin the function around, the shape stays the same. Algebraically, this is f of negative x equals negative f of x. That is, the negative and positive values are sa the same except for their sign. If one is positive, the other is negative. Whole numbers are either even or odd. The same is not true for functions. Most functions are neither even nor odd. Both are restrictive symmetries, so don't expect any random function to be either of them. I've briefly talked about periodic functions in the previous video when I talked about trig. A function is periodic if it repeats the same shape over and over again. The period is the length of the repeated shape. For the purposes of this course, the trig functions are basically the only periodic functions that we will consider. A function is increasing if it is growing. Algebraically, this means if one input is greater than another, b greater than a, then the same is true for the output, output f of b greater than f of a. Visually, the graph is simply going up. And likewise, a function is decreasing if the opposite is true, if it is declining. Algebraically, if one input is greater than the other, b greater than a, then the opposite is true for output, f of b less than f of a. And visually, the graph is simply going down. Sometimes it is nice to refer to functions that are either always increasing or always decreasing, even without specifically knowing which. These functions are called monotonic. They have a single direction, always going up or always going down. Most functions are not monotonic because they change direction, sometimes going up and other times going down. A function is bounded above if there is some number a such that f of x is always less than a. And I can visualize this by drawing a horizontal line at y value a and the entire graph of the function will sit below the line. And similarly, a function is bounded below if there is some number b such that f of x is greater than b. I can again visualize this by drawing a horizontal line at y value b, and the entire graph of the function will sit above the line. If both are true, bounded above and below, then the function is simply called bounded. A bounded function always stays between two lines, one above and one below. An intercept is a place where a function crosses an axis. The y-intercept is, therefore, where the function crosses the y-axis. It is sound simpl found simply by calculating f of 0, since the y-axis is all points where the x-coordinate is 0. There is only one possible y-intercept, because of the vertical line test for functions. The y-axis is a vertical line, so it can only cross the graph once. If 0 is not in the domain, there is no y-intercept. An x-intercept is a place where the function crosses the x-axis. The x-axis is all points where y equals 0, so the output must be 0. Therefore, to find these, I need to calculate f of x equals 0. There can be many of these, even infinitely many for some functions. 
These are also called the roots of a functions, particularly when the function is a polynomial. This completes this rapid summary of the properties of functions. Some of these are easy to calculate, but some of them are quite difficult. By the end of the course, we'll have a whole new tool set to try to understand functions, a tool set that will help calculate many of these properties.